Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. This is going to be an end-to-end -end learning where we will be talking about the physical significance of heat equation. We will explore the mathematical nature of the equation and we extensively talk about the solution techniques that include both analytical and numerical techniques. In analytical technique, we are more focused on separation of variables. In numerical technique, we will be talking about various numerical schemes along with their stability and convergence criteria analysis. So with further delay, we proceed with today's topic. In today's topic, we are going to cover the significance or the physical significance of heat conduction equation. Then we do a comparative analysis of heat and wave equation. This is very much relevant with respect to the topic which we are going to cover in this course and then we talk about the paradox of instantaneous heat propagation this is extensively important uh, as far as the current topic is concerned and we'll be focusing on this with utmost care and we end today's video with a discussion of what we are going to cover in the upcoming video and how it relates with this particular video so now we uh, carry forward with the physical significance of heat conduction equation we have taken a two dimensional case for giving an example so you can see there is a first order time derivative partial derivative in the left hand side which is equated with the second order space derivatives for two dimensions you have two space derivatives in x and y coordinates if it is a three dimension, three dimension, then you have additional second order space derivative with respect to z direction. For one dimensional case, you can drop this particular term and the equation looks like this. To understand the physical significance, it is, it is enough to have a one dimensional form because one dimensional form reduces the complexity of multiple dimensions. And if you want to visualize the case in one dimension then what you need to think is you have a line like this and along the line at certain time say t equal to zero you have a random distribution of temperature and because of that random distribution of temperature there might be, might be gradients existing on the line and because of that heat may flow up to certain time and we are going to solve for this so along that line at every point you are going to solve for the temperature and you, do, you need to see the temperature at different time for all the points. So this is what the solution of heat equation will give you. But before it gives you the solution, let us try to understand what is the significance of this beautiful correlation between a first order time derivative and a second order space derivative. So to understand the physical significance, what do we do? We have just broken the term with respect to the very definition of the coefficient or the differential coefficients. And we have already explored much about the physical significance in our another series, which is on ComSol. I'll put the link in the description. If you go to those video that talks more detail about the physical significance and this will be very much relevant if you are doing this particular course with seriousness. But still we will be briefing the physical significance here also. So for briefing that initially what we do we go ahead with the definition of the differential coefficient. You can see this is the definition of the first order and this is the definition of the second order by some mathematical manipulations or mathematical steps you reach here this is the delta of delta t that is the difference of temperature difference so two differences are there and if you take difference of difference then what do you need to do you need to visualize with respect to an example so this example we have taken say three particular points we have considered for the analysis and these three points can be indexed as i, this is i plus 1 and the previous one is i minus 1 
for more simplicity you can call this point as 1 this as 2 and this as 3 and the temperature at these three points can be denoted by this bar and this is at t1 this is t2 and this is t3 so point to be noted here is this t2 is lesser than both the adjacent points that is t1 and t3 and here we were talking about difference of differences so what is the difference the difference between these two points is t3 minus t2 and the difference between these two points is t2 minus t1 now whenever you are taking a difference you should take care of this that your higher index will be coming initially then minus then the lower index like t3 minus t2 t2 minus t1 but not t1 minus t2 so as it is in the right hand side we write this difference as delta t r and this difference as delta t l that is left hand side so this difference of differences gives you difference of t r and the difference of t l and then 2 delta x because of this coefficient we proceed further with the mathematical steps and we we put the value of delta tr and delta tl as i have already explained t3 minus t2 then minus of t2 minus t1 then again some mathematical manipulations or mathematical steps what it gives t3 this minus minus becomes plus so t3 plus t1 minus 1 t2 another minus t2 gives you minus 2 t2 then what do we do we take 2 as common then it gives t3 plus t1 by 2 minus t2 now this thing is very much important because the heat flow rate is directly proportional to this term. So what is the physical significance of this term? So the first one is the average of the adjacent two temperatures. Suppose we are considering this point and the adjacent two points are this one and this one. And this particular term is nothing but the average of these two. So this blue line and the green line that is t3 and t1 the average will be t1 plus t3 by 2 so here it is so this is the average minus its own temperature that is t2 so if there is a difference between these two there will be heat flow now if the difference is very high difference of what average temperature of the adjacent points minus its own temperature if this difference is very high there will be high rate of heat flow if this difference is less, there will be less flow rate of heat. If this difference is zero, there will be no heat flow and we can call this is a steady state. Now, once this particular term exists, then uh, what happens? This alpha increases the factor. So, if you have existing this thing and if your alpha is very high, then it facilitates the heat transfer. So, if alpha is higher, you have a higher heat transfer. This is very much physical because you know the conducting materials have high alpha or heat diffusivity then uh, because of that only the conductive materials transfer heat very well it's a first is a faster conductor of heat if alpha is less then it's a slower conductor of heat so this is the physical things which you need to know and as I have mentioned you should go through the videos those are given in the description box because that talks more about the physical significance. Now we come to the comparative analysis of heat and wave equation. As I have mentioned earlier, this is very much important in the context of understanding the mathematical nature and the physical visualization of the heat equation. Without the wave equation comparison, I feel the learning of heat equation is not complete and that's why I have taken this too and you will find a MIT lecture also where they have compared this heat and wave equation and they have extensively talked about this. I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description box, link of the MIT lecture. If you go through that, it will further help you. But I'll be explaining everything what is given in those lectures because I have made this particular lecture consulting multiple books and multiple world standard YouTube videos. Anyway, so in the heat equation, if we look at carefully, it has a first order time derivative. 
whereas in the wave equation you have a second order time derivative for the 2d you have this two coefficient but for 1d we'll drop this so you just compare it with the 1d so consider this one is not available you have only x directions so the only difference is this you have a first order and you have a second order here this is c square here this c is the wave speed things to be uh, points to be noted here is this is important what is c c is the wave propagation speed so i have taken an animation where you can see a particular wave is propagating and you can actually visualize that it is propagating with a finite speed which you can actually perceive if you look at here that means you have a finite speed another example i have taken suppose this one we are all familiar with if you have a stagnant water suppose you have a pond and suddenly you put a stone into the pond what will happen the disturbance will start and gradually the disturbance will grow and it will reach to the farthest corner of the pond but this propagation needs some time the moment you throw the stone the effect will not reach to the corner of the pond it will take some time but gradually it will grow it will grow and grow and then it will reach to the corner but if you look at the phenomenon uh, then you can realize that certain time is involved to reach the effect from the source to a further point suppose you look at here a disturbance has initiated here and it is gradually growing but at this point the effect is still not there and the water is stagnant but if you uh, stand here and wait you will see after certain time this kind of rings will be coming here also so two things to be noted here the person or the molecule standing here it does not know that some disturbance has been created at this zone however if this person or the point here if it waits for certain time then it can realize that certain things has happened here and its effect is coming here in the form of energy flow or wave flow whatever you call it so ultimately what you the take home message is there is some time scale involved for the propagation of wave now if it is the case then if somebody ask us like what is the propagation speed of heat here because in the wave equation we have a direct c which is the wave speed and we all know from the very beginning of the wave equation when we started learning about it but in the heat equation instead of a speed what we have we have a thermal diffusivity so this is different this is thermal diffusivity this is wave speed now as this is thermal diffusivity it does not talk about the wave speed we well, not wave speed it does not talk about the heat speed but what if i want to know about the heat speed so in the as there is no second order time derivative so it can be it can be said that the heat flows at infinitely fast speed in this particular case what does it mean suppose for this particular real life example what i have taken this particular wall is at a higher temperature and the other walls are kept at lower temperature and what will happen because this particular temperature is high there is a gradient and because of the gradient heat will start flowing in these directions along this direction that is away from the hot surface and gradually the temperature of the block at every point will change so if you look if you if you if you proceed with uh, in the time direction then at every point the temperature will keep changing so whichever point on the space you consider the temperature will keep changing as the time changes now this is the thing you will be visualizing uh, for heat during a heat flow but the thing is we don't talk about the heat propagation speed but it is said that the heat travels at a very high speed that means suppose you initially you have a block wh whose temperature is uniform and suddenly you heated it up that this surface suddenly you have heated up 
then what will happen this effect will immediately reach to all the corners of the block unlike this case so in this case what happened a disturbance initiated here and it took some time to grow and grow and go to the farthest corner so this is the case for wave but for heat what i am telling if you suddenly heat it up the effect will immediately reach to all the corners so immediately reach means it will take no time to to spread the effect of this heating up at every corner of the block so it does not matter what is the dimension of the block even if the dimension is infinitely long then also any effect that is created here will reach to the infinitely far distance that means very high heat propagation speed very high heat flow speed or this is called in instantaneous heat propagation but the point is if this is the case that means heat is flowing at a speed which is practical which is mathematically infinite but there is a thing called einstein theory of relativity according to that the heat not i mean in nothing can be flown nothing can be traveled more than the speed of light and the light has a finite propagation speed so in this case what's happening we are telling infinite speed so that is why it's a paradox but even though the paradox exists we are okay with this heat equation why because we are engineers in engineering we only bother about a correct or not even correct a real life or a realistic solution if this particular equation can talk about can predict about temperature at different points accurately or with some minor error then we are okay with that but mathematically as infinite speed cannot exist then we need to modify this particular equation so there should be some second order time derivative in this case also and yes this equation is available and that equation is called relativistic heat equation in that case we have both first order and the second order term if it has both then we call it hyperbolic equation like the way this particular equation is mathematically called hyperbolic equation and this particular equation is called parabolic equation but if we put a second order time derivative here this parabolic equation becomes an hyper ha, hyperbolic equation so we'll talk about this mathematical nature of the equation in the upcoming videos uh, today we are just telling you that this is hyperbolic this is parabolic but if you put second order time derivative this becomes hyperbolic now simple solutions of this particular equations are given initially let us talk about this suppose you have a direct delta heat input that means suddenly as i have told suddenly you have changed the temperature of this surface and you made it a uh, finitely higher value so suddenly if you do that that is kind of a direct delta function so here say at time t equal to 0 or x equal to position equal to 0 you have put a very high value and for other points say x equal to x, uh, any other point other than x equal to 0 or t equal to 0 the values are zero so direct delta function means at a particular point it will have a finite high value and for other points it is practically zero so if this is the case that means you just try to correlate with the physical scenario you have a block suddenly at some point you have increased the temperature then what will happen heat will start flowing because you have created a gradient and heat will keep flowing and you will get the temperature at different points on the block by the solution of this particular equation and the solution of this particular equation in one dimension for this particular case is uh, like this 1 by root over of 4 pi t exponential minus x square by 4 t so from this equation also if you see if you just slightly increase the time then you will have finite temperature distribution at all the point along x and that is why you can say the heat is flowing at infinitely fast speed because a slight change of time changes the temperature of all the points immediately but 
this is not the case here the solution has a form like this half f that is a function of x minus ct and half function of x plus ct where f is an arbitrary function that depends on the boundary conditions but what is the meaning of this x minus ct and x plus ct it means that it is propagating with certain wave speed c and physically if you look at here you have created a disturbance here so it creates an undulation or wave propagation but you are standing here for say but when you stand here you do not know that something has been happened here but after a certain time you will see that this wave will keep propagating keep propagating and after a certain time it will reach to you when it reaches to you you understand okay something has happened there and a wave was coming and now it is here where i am standing so this particular thing actually talks about this velocity or this speed so the point or the difference here is if you put a certain input here a heat input or a temperature input the effect will immediately reach to all the corners irrespective of its dimension but in the wave propagation case if you put a disturbance here the effect will not immediately reach to all the corners it will need some time to reach there if the point is very far away it will need very high time to reach there if the point is very close then also it will need some time but shorter time to uh, to have the effect so this is the difference now if this is the case one more thing is pending I, I, what i have told is heat is flowing at infinitely high speed and that is called the paradox of instantaneous heat propagation we will be talking about this in the upcoming video but still if heat although heat flows with infinitely high speed then also we have a time scale over here so what is the time scale signifying as in this case i have told the time scale is the time scale for wave propagation it is correlated with the wave speed but here what is the time scale signify here the time scale signifies the time requirement for reaching to the steady state so again what is steady state steady state is a point where you have fixed temperature across all the points on space so with respect to time there is no change in temperature for every point but there will be differences of temperature in different points but if you fix a particular point and you look at time dimension then with respect to time there will be no change if it reaches to the steady state and this time actually signify that time scale for reaching the steady state so i am again repeating although heat flows instantaneously or with a very high speed or with an infinite speed but to reach the steady state it needs some time and in the heat equation this t actually signifies that particular time scale to attain the steady state so this much information was necessary to study the heat equation and we have talked something about to about those equations today and we'll talk more about this particular equation in the upcoming video in the upcoming video we'll mostly talk about the relativistic heat equation the telegraph heat equation and this paradox of instantaneous heat propagation will make it more clear to you so after we are clear with the heat equation with the relativistic heat equation then we'll go for the solution initially we talk about the analytical solution and then gradually we go into the numerical solution meanwhile we'll talk about fourier series because fourier series is important in heat equation because heat equation was initially solved by scientist fourier and uh, and whatever scientist has discussed that i will be talking briefly uh, in this particular course so with this i am uh, stopping here today and i request you to subscribe to my channel for getting more updates on this particular course and other courses thank you